I don't know what animal that is, but <laughs> that's one of our dive teams, yeah. A uh, little experience that you can do on Friday through to Sunday, I'm pretty sure. So that's just some, some tourists in the water, that's what I like to call them. So keep an eye out for our big three. Uh, I mentioned Mitchell before, he's 3.3 metres long, he's a grey nurse shark, he's very beautiful. We also have Mr G, who is our largest fish. He's a giant Queensland groper. He's around 220 to 230 kilograms and he's around two and a half metres in length. We also have Mars. I mentioned that our stingray species in here is the largest stingray species you can find on the planet. Mars is the biggest of our stingrays here. So they're all ladies and Mars is definitely the largest out of them all. I can't tell the difference between them. They look very similar to me, except one whose name is Siobhan. She's my favorite because that's the only one I know. She has beautiful white stripes on her back. It looks like someone painted racing stripes on her. So I'll bring her up if I can spot the stripes, that is. Now, who likes sharks? Any shark lovers? Quite a few, but a few. Who's scared of sharks? Yeah, that's all right. Very natural to be scared of sharks. It's big, it's full of teeth. That's okay. Now there's around 500 species of shark on the planet. There are only about three that have actually been recorded to bite a person. Does anyone know what those three sharks are? Yeah. Not the grey nurse. Not the grey We've got the great white. white. How big is the great white? You get to around six meters uh, long. The great white. Anything else? Like tiger shark. That's right. And we've got the bull shark as well. The what? Bull shark, that's right. So the great white likes to eat uh, fat seals. Unfortunately, we do look like a fat seal when we're surfing. So that's just a case of misidentification. They usually let go after their first bite. Uh, the tiger shark is known as the garbage man of the sea because they can eat anything. They don't discriminate what they put in their mouths. They can eat uh, anything from car tires to jellyfish to dead seals and dead turtle shells. So they don't care what they eat. The bull shark, however, is known as the most aggressive shark in the ocean because it can uh, go into a freshwater environment. To do so, it needs a little bit more energy than the regular shark. So it's more hungry or hangry, I guess. Hungry, angry, a lot of the time. So that's three species out of 500. And we demonize the other 497 species for being man-eaters because we're slightly afraid of some sharks. Now, those aggressive sharks, they bite around, on average, nine people every year. You might be thinking, oh, you know, let's kill them all. We actually kill around 100 to 110 million sharks every year. So it's not an eye for an eye, it's not on the same level, it's not fair at all. Uh, generally, that's for the shark, uh, the shark fin trade. I'm not sure if you've heard it, it's a big eastern uh, delicacy. That's called the status symbol actually. Yeah. So a way that we can help out our sharks and pretty much everything else in the ocean is to ask for MSC. Okay, so when you buy seafood, you can still eat seafood, I eat it all the time. But when you go to your fishmonger or seafood shop, ask is an MSC. All that is, is just a stamp approval. It doesn't cost anything more. All MSC do is make sure that it's sustainably caught, meaning there's a lot more fish in the sea, so we're not uh, decimating populations. And that's ethically caused meaning we're not hurting any other species by catching a lot of one species. So if you go to the shop, ask is it MSC, if they say yes, shop away. Uh, if they say no, I suggest you don't shop there. But anyway, we've got around nine species of shark in this tank, I love them all. This is Bob, he's a sandbar whaler. I mentioned before that he's afraid of bubbles. We don't know why, he's a big two and a half meter shark and he's afraid of bubbles. He stays well away from our divers, who are equipped with uh, oxygen tanks, and he stays well away from the filters. So he loves this portion of the tank because he's far away from both of those. I showed you Mitchell before, uh, big large shark, 3.3 meters in length. How many fish do you think he eats every day? Just shout it out. Yeah? 17 fish a day, it's a good number, good number. Anyone else? Just shout it out. No? Oh yeah, 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 no. Five? Pretty close. Six? Six. No, it's, he actually eats one fish this size a week. So he doesn't eat a lot at all. Some weeks he doesn't even eat. Some weeks he eats twice. But usually on average, it's one fish, very small fish a week. There he is. 
So you might see that he uh, swims pretty slowly. He actually sleeps 18 hours a day. Okay, so he's like a koala in the ocean. Uh, and then when he's awake, he actually swims pretty lazily. So he doesn't uh, need much energy to keep powering his everyday life. Now sharks are pretty smart. I like to equate them to the same intelligence level as a dog. Smarter than some dogs. If you have a Labrador, you know what I'm talking about. But they are pretty clever. I get asked a lot, do they eat the fish in this tank? They don't need to. Okay, they know that they're going to get fed, target fed every day. So why waste all this energy chasing a healthy fish that could outswim them when they're just going to get fed anyway? Doesn't make sense to them. And that's why they don't eat any of these fish. Now, some of the fish though have eaten the sharks. No one really asks that question. They usually think it's the opposite. Mr. G, I mentioned he's our largest fish. As soon as we put him in here, he burped up a sea turtle shell. We thought that was quite exceptional. Uh, we also had five tip reef, uh, reef shark pups in here. Now we only got one. He didn't eat them all, he only ate two. And both in one bite. So that was pretty crazy. We, yeah, here he comes, speak of the devil. I like to think of this guy as the elephant of the water. Um, as I said, he's around 250 kilos. That's only half grown, okay? He can get much bigger. He won't grow much in length, but definitely in good. He's gonna show off his beautiful side. He might get a clean at our cleaning station. Another thing to remember, guys, about this glass, all right, you might have seen how thick it is over there before you enter the tunnel. What that doesn't tell you is that it's actually reverse magnified. So everything you see in here, is actually one third bigger than it appears. You got a question? Is that big fish? Uh, what kind of fish is that? That's a giant Queensland groper. And what does that mean? Uh, they like sea turtles. That's their main thing. So it was a bit of a shock when they ate some of our sharks. Um, but sea turtles, yeah, that's a pretty uh, tough thing to eat. So they're definitely equipped to eat um, pretty hard-bodied animals. Do you have a question, young man? So sometimes a bull shark eat people on purpose? Um, not really, they're, more, they're very curious. They are hungry a lot of the time, but they're not interested in us. We don't look fat enough for them, okay? They'd rather a juicy fish instead of us. We're, we're pretty solid, full of bone, especially when they bite us, they bite our legs. Not a lot of meat there. So generally it would just be curiosity, seeing what is that weird thing in the water? The divers look pretty foreign in there to me, so. Good question. Now you might actually see some sharks in here that look like bull sharks, but are not bull sharks. They're actually my favorite animal in this enclosure. We have three spear tooth sharks. We're very lucky to have them. This is the only place in the world that you can see them in captivity. So we have three. Uh, we've got Roman, who's a male, and then we also have two females that I've forgotten their names, but that's not important. Star and Nikki. The cool thing about this, oh what? Star and Nikki. Star and Nikki, there Nikki's we go. Really cheeky. Nikki's cheeky. Roman's the coolest though, in my opinion. <laughs> There's one just above our sandbar whaler. Now what makes these guys so cool is that we know pretty much nothing about these guys. We don't know how long they're gonna grow, we don't know what they eat in the wild, pretty much nothing. <laughs> Now there's rumored to be around 300 of them left in the wild. So that's not a lot at all. So that means we have 1% of the whole global population in this enclosure. Only place in the world that you can see them. They are local guys. Uh, they've been found in the Footscray River. So they're probably dogs fans, but that's all right. I still like them. But I still think they're pretty cool. So uh, they do look like bull sharks. I did mention that. I also think this is me, this is not science backing up. I think they are pretty closely related to bull sharks because they have that ability to go into a low salt environment, which the bull shark can do. Does anyone have any questions at all? Big voice. Can a bull shark break the glass? No, I don't think so. They do ram things, you're right. Bull sharks love to headbutt stuff uh, when they're mad or hungry. But if you see that glass chunk over there, you'll see how thick it is. It's around just under 30 centimeters in thickness and there's different layers. So you'll need to break all, I think there's five layers of glass to make something significant, like damage wise, yeah. Good question though, it's very strong, you're very safe. It's all good. <laughs> Any other questions at all? Yeah. Um, how big is a great white shark? How big is a great white shark? 
So they're the second largest shark, or largest known shark, I should say. Um, they can get to around six meters long. That's very large for a shark. I think the largest great white that's ever been filmed, her name was Deep Blue. She's a female, uh, very, very thick and girthy. She's around 22 feet. So I'm not sure what that is in meters. I think it's about five. I heard the great white shark sign. I've heard it like in the ocean. If somebody goes out swimming, they catch a shark and can take a person. Yeah, look, great whites have bitten people in the past, but it's always due to misidentification. So they like to eat seals. We look like fat seals when we surf, and that's it. Yeah. Here's Mr. G again, showing off his uh, big mouth. When he eats something, um, that mouth doesn't just open downwards, it also opens up sideways. So you could fit your head and shoulders in him. That's how big he is. Stingrays are pretty neat. I was talking about their barbs earlier, that they're made out of keratin, which is cool. There's actually only been two recorded deaths of stingray in Australia. One of them, unfortunately, was Steve Irwin. It was a tragic accident. These creatures are super docile, all equipped with their barbs so far. And you saw how they interact with our divers. They're very, very uh, calm and, yeah, very docile. Now, I like to think of stingrays as pancake versions of sharks. They're very closely related in the evolutionary tree. Sharks have been on this planet for around 400 million years. That's way before dinosaurs. Stingrays diverged from them around 350 million years ago. So, there's a lot of creatures in this tank that kind of look like a hybrid between stingray and a shark, like our sawfish over there. They have a shark tail and almost a ray-like body. A cool way to see if it's closer to a ray or a shark, try and find their gills. Shark's gills are on the side of their body. Stingrays, it's on their belly or their ventral side. So next time Charlie, our sawfish, comes over here, try and find her gills. And that's how, or who closer she is related to, if that makes sense. Now, sawfish are pretty critically endangered. They're not locals, they're from North Queensland. We're very lucky to have these two massive, massive sawfish in here. And I did say two, this is Charlie again. Yeah, look at her gills, try and find them. She's the one that you'll always see swimming. We also have a lovely male whose name is Rhino. Okay, he's a little bit smaller than Charlie, and we brought him here to be her boyfriend and hopefully breed up. <laughs> but he's a bit of a couch potato, so he doesn't really uh, do anything except sit on the floor, uh, well, on the couch, I guess I should say. But fingers crossed, in a couple months, we should have some sawfish pups. He came here around four months ago, so I guess he's still warming up to the enclosure. And yeah, hopefully, some little sawfish pups, which would be very, very cute. Well, thank you guys for listening. You've been an awesome audience. I'll be hanging around for the, ne the next couple of minutes. If you have any questions at all, don't be shy. Come up to me and ask. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.